Hi there. Today on Typical Books, it is a continuation of vampire books with vampire fiction. We're going to start off sort of where we left off previously with Vampires by David J. Skull. This is the paperback, so it's a little easier to manage than that giant hardcover. While the hardcover is beautiful, this is a little more utilitarian. If this is your first time here, welcome and please subscribe. Share this with your friends, especially those who write or read vampire fiction. This contains some of the books that I have digitally, namely Vampire Classic, Greats, I Am Legend by Richard Matheson, and Dracula by Bram Stoker. And if you haven't watched the previous video about nonfiction vampires, where I also talked about this book, and profusely thanked Jason White of Jason's Weird Reads, who had asked if I had a video uh, covering vampire books, and I couldn't just do one, and I knew the fiction one would be a lot longer. I was so excited to do this particular video that I did the nonfiction one first, because it's basically reach over, grab all the nonfiction books and do a video super fast. This took a couple days of sort of hemming and hawing and thinking. There are vampire adjacent books that there are a couple on my list, but I didn't want to get into that. It would be a sprawling list if I did so. I mean, there are so many vampire books. I will shout out again to the vampirelibrary.com where you'll be able to find all of the other vampire books. You can sort them by series, fiction, standalone novels and sequels and things like that. And of course, as I said in the previous video, nonfiction as well. But their fiction list is super long. I don't know when the last time it was updated, so it is out of date. But be that as it may, it's massive. So my list is not that big, but I'd like to think that my list does contain most of the classics that you need if you're just starting to read about vampires. If you read a few vampire YA books and want to read some more contemporary or classic adult horror literature or literary horror that is based on vampires. Of course, a lot of this comes into play because of my own vampire fiction. Now, I have always been a huge fan of vampires. One of my cousins dressed up as Dracula every year for Halloween, and I loved it every single year. Every If he didn't dress up as Dracula, I was deeply disappointed. I even dressed up as a vampire a couple times myself. Now, I did write in uh, 2011, Night Face, my vampire novel, and I'm working on the sequel now because I am slow writing, especially noveling. Short stories are not that slow, but noveling is slow for me. Uh, but yeah, in that I did a lot of research coupled with what I already knew or thought I knew about vampires. Now, of course, this book was not in my repertoire at the time and I kind of wish it was, but I had slowly been collecting and I'd collected a lot and read a lot of vampire stuff in that time. I've also gotten rid of a lot of vampire stuff. So this is by, by no means a totally comprehensive collection, but it is an okay start. Starting with, as noted, Bram Stoker's Dracula, told in a pestillary format, and I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. A very different story, but counted as vampire fiction nevertheless. Now you'll see my collection is quite Dracula-centric, and these books are no exception. Now these are by Dacre Stoker, Dacre Stoker and J.D. Barker, Dacre Stoker and Ian Holt, and this is Dracula, the Undead, and Dracul. I have reviewed this recently so you may have watched that and I really enjoy these there is a lot of naysayers about whether these are really true continuations or if it is some sort of sort of an enterprising tactic uh, it makes a lot of sense to reclaim the Bram Stoker legacy by Dacre Stoker. I think it's an amazing thing to hear him talk. You can see the love, seeing what his contributions are to Bram Stoker's legacy and reading the book and read, this is even better actually. I really love these books. So there, I'm a Dacre Stoker fan, go figure. When it comes to these books, they are just beautiful. Beginning with Dracula the Undead, it is something that could sit on your shelf alongside the original Dracula. And now the original Dracula had many different iterations. I'm pulling here largely from Vampires by David J. Skull and you can see the, the love of the curation in the sidebars and why I consider this more of a non-fiction book really. But it is a beautiful book and it has had many different iterations. Dracula, 
The Undead is a beautiful book as well with the gilded edges. I love the deckled edges. It's just a wonderful book to read. The copy I have of Dracul is very similar in its beauty. It has a wonderful spine. So without the dust jackets, they will look really beautiful against any classic edition of Dracula that you might have on your shelf. Now, of course, it doesn't have the deckled edges in the Dracul, but hey, we're going to stick in a little bit of a Dracula vein with The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova. This is a really fun read. Um, if I could just, if I could skim it, you know, if I could read every 10th page and speed read it, it might have sit a little better with me and a lot of other readers. This is a very thick book. It almost comes in at two inches thick. So you have, this is a good summer read actually. If you want something that you can really dive into and devour and live in and it's very I think hand in hand with a lot of YA fantasy if you've read a lot of YA fantasy and just want to be taken on a journey then this book will do that for you. I highly enjoyed the story and I liked where it went so I don't know I would love to see this made into a movie I know that that's been in talks it has some epistolary format so if you're missing that from the original Dracula alongside just a really wonderful story and an opulent story. I really enjoyed the historian. I think that this goes hand in hand with all the Dacre Stoker stuff too. Dracula, Vlad the Impaler, a lot of that comes into play in one of my favorite stories by Nancy Kilpatrick, which is The Wild Hunt. The Wild Hunt is a modern and contemporary story actually that pulls in a lot of the you know subculture that has created around vampires and their lore and the actual history and the history of Vlad the Impaler as well and many other vampiric things, uh, vampiric variations, hence the title with all of the other stories about different styles of vampires. And of course they all come from the exact same origin. So I really enjoyed this book in particular, The Wild Hunt, which is a standalone novella now if you're interested, it's only recently to Lydia, enjoy these thirsty, tasty bloodsuckers. Well, they're not even thirsty, they're tasty. Thank you, Nancy. Wonderful stuff and recommended if you like short stories and want something new. If you've been saying to yourself, I like vampire stories, but I'm really sick and tired of all the same old, same old, then Nancy Kilpatrick. I only have digital copies of her Revenge of the Vampire King series and that is definitely adult and it is definitely, I wouldn't say erotic, necessarily, but it is tasty. So if you're interested in some very different vampires, Nancy Kilpatrick is the way to go because she's also very versed in the classics. Speaking of versed in the classics, Interview with the Vampire, the whole vampire series. Um, I like the Mayfair Witcher series too. So the way that the two intertwine is interesting to me. This is my husband's copy from his collection, which I've shown in a quick succession because there still is the 10th and final wrap up video for my bookshelf tour that will include uh, a lot of these. But hey, Anne Rice knows what she's doing when it comes to vampires. This is a beautiful book. It's a beautiful collection and it's a beautiful series to own. Now, aside from Nancy Kilpatrick being the reigning queen of Canadian vampire writers, Anne Rice is likely crowned the reigning queen of all vampire writers living today. So there's a real reason for that. She does stick with some very frilled cuff. It's a like a bleeding neckline bodice ripper in a way but it does subvert a lot of our typical expectations when it comes to vampires and immortality in particularly. It's a study on loneliness on top of that. So a fantastic read, a fantastic book, fantastic entry. And yes, sometimes her descriptions of architecture could be florid, but I like that. Now we'll get into a little bit of the newer vampires, but before I leave older vampires, I want to mention the vampire tapestry. Now the Unicorn Tapestry by Susan McKee Tarnas is quoted in Vampires by David J. Skull. Uh, the Vampire Tapestry isn't excerpted in there, but I had had a copy of that, but it went with the call. When it came to vampire novels that I didn't think I would reread or wouldn't refer back to, then I just uh, unhauled them as the kids say. So yeah, it is definitely at Black Squirrel Books if you're interested in a copy, but it is a new modern vampire with old vampire uh, steadfast rules to it. 
and it is somebody struggling with what they are and they happen to be a doctor. So it's very interesting how they justify a lot of their practices and their uh, reality. Another book that I don't happen to own that neatly brings us into more modern and different vampires uh, beyond what Nancy Kilpatrick is doing is The Radleys by Matt Haig. I had passed by The Radleys for the longest time in the bookstore because I didn't know what it was about. I saw a fence, I saw blood, I thought, I don't know what I thought until I read the back jacket copy. If you've passed by The Radleys thinking, huh, it's just a catchy cover for YA something or another, uh, it is a vampire story. And if you had picked it up expecting some something like Anne Rice or something like Dacre Stoker or Kostova's work, you will be sadly mistaken because it does live sort of in that YA atmosphere in a way, but it is a, a rollicking good time as reviewers would quote. It is a very fun idea in how modern vampires live. I haven't watched that popular, you know, uh, Fly to the Concord style vampire show that everyone likes, that funny one. I haven't watched that yet. So I think that it sort of has that sort of idea. Or if we're going to delve right into film, uh, Only Lover is Left Alive, that sort of idea of how vampires really live. But this particular one has some more like true blood kind of angles to it. So if you like true blood and you like to see how vampires would handle themselves in this day and age, the Rallies is really fun. It's masterfully written. It's written for a very broad audience. I think it's really fun as far as a summer read. It's a very quick read and it's just fun. It's just very digestible. And yeah, I enjoyed that and recommend it. I wish I had a copy still. I believe I passed it on to a family member, if not straight up unhauled it. Now for something completely different. Uh, you might have seen me review this book, A Small Charred Face by Kazuki Sakuraba. I really did enjoy this. Now it takes another twist on how vampires would live in this day and age. And it's got a tone because it's translated that may not groove as well as something like the Radleys. If you want something very digestible, very North American than the Radleys, if you want to immerse yourself in a different tempo entirely, then a small charred face is for you. Uh, it's a lovely, lovely book, and I enjoyed every single minute of reading this. And I do like things like Atsuichi, and I have to get into some Junji Ito because that is what all the cool kids are reading these days. So I think that that would really be the kind of tone I really appreciate as far as uh, dark thrillers and horror. So this is a really interesting take on new vampires. I didn't entirely raid Chris's bookshelf, so I'm not sure if he has I'll Let the Right One In by John Avita Lindquist, but I do have the sequel in here. So, hey, Let the Old Dreams Die, the sequel to Let the Right One In. And again, more contemporary, different vampires, a very different tone. If you want something that is not frilled cuffs, dusty libraries, and uh, altercations at midnight in the parks and the catacombs. If you want away from that, if you want something that's a little more uh, suburban, fresh, that has to do with, again, love and loneliness. That's a lot of the themes that you're dealing with in this, specifically loneliness, which is really the, the thing you're coming to vampires to, to grapple with, I think, in a lot of ways. Um, this is fantastic. Beautiful, beautiful. Regardless of what movie you watch, I really like the original movie myself. But I would say reading Lindquist's work. This particular book has some really cool, almost like, like it has some Lovecraftian things. It has a story called The Tindalus, which I just, wow. So cosmic horror. You're getting a sense of the cosmic in the way that he writes too. But to see him take all that away and write um, sort of a monster story with Let the Right One In. If you enjoy that, you'll enjoy The Border too. But yes, different new vampires. Different new vampires. Well, hello, uh, 30 days of night. We kind of went on a hunt for these uh, not long ago. So this is the Steve Niles classic, now classic 30 days of night. Incidentally, if anyone ever comes across a red 30 days of night Zippo, it's ours and I would love to replace my husband's lost Zippo. So if you took it, 
Yeah, I, if anyone could ever find one, if you ever see one in a comic book shop, let me know immediately. I will pay a king's ransom for that lighter. The cool kids had discovered something so cool and had come out with the movie. It is just beautiful. The artwork is beautiful. The story is impeccable. And again, it's something like how do vampires handle being vampires? How do humans handle dealing with vampires once they're here? And where would you go if you were a vampire? What location makes sense to you when you need something like 30 days of night? These next two books, one is way more vampire than the other, but I do like these new takes on vampires. You want some Western vampires. Andy Davidson has you covered within the Valley of the Sun. You may recall me reviewing this. I was late coming to this as a Bram Stoker nom, and I really, really did enjoy this. It was fun. I like the idea of a Western vampire and Spiders in the Daffodils by my friend Nelson W. Piles is another story that if you enjoyed this, go with Spiders in the Daffodils too, because that particular story is just, oh my gosh, I like the West. I'm so far removed from that culture. And I did have like a uh, Billy the Kid, Old West shoot 'em up book when I was a kid with a really wonderful illustrations, sort of carnival-esque illustrations. So that's like the closest I've ever come to this in real life. So this playing Red Dead Redemption or mostly watching Red Dead Redemption be played and reading Spiders and the Daffodils, uh, it is really the place where a vampire could run amok like mad. Beautiful stuff. And Andrew Piper's The Only Child. I feel like it's spoilerish saying that it's vampire, including it here. Um, that's why I'm putting it way at the end. And it's not only vampires. It has to do with a lot of other things. If you've read any reviews on this and not read it, I highly recommend picking it up if you are a fan of any sort of horror, like classic horror. If you're interested in the Mummy, Frankenstein, Dracula, the Wolfman, all of those things, Hammer Horror, I suppose, but all of those castle horror pictures and stories and things written at the turn of the last turn of the century. So you can tell that he's writing just with huge understanding of what buttons these monsters and these stories pushed in readers and they're the buttons that they pushed in him as well, being such a good writer. So taking that and his fandom together creates just a wonderful woven tapestry of monsters and monsterhood and again how they would live in this world or how this world lives around them. I did recently redo the cover for Night Face. I'm still waiting on my author's copies because shipping to Canada takes forever right now and I am not complaining because I have mostly been not ordering things off the internet. The last thing I wanted to do since March 10th is endanger anyone else and have anyone come to my door that didn't absolutely need to. So I've really kind of dumbed down all my ordering and no one's going to be coming to my door to buy any books. So I didn't really need them, but I did want a copy of my own book to put on my shelves. Right. But I have recently redone the cover mostly because it's going to be matching up with the sequel that will be coming out and the two covers will go together, so to speak. It was that or release one giant tome that contained book one and book two, which might happen someday down the road, but I kind of doubt it because I like them being the way they are, considering many people already have the first book on their shelves, right? So Night Face one, just Night Face and the Elders Night Face. So there you have it, the vampire through history in a way, from the beginning of vampire fandom anyhow with Bram Stoker's Dracula, all the way to today's vampire stories. And my gosh, there are so many. This is really just a, the tiny, tiny tip of the iceberg, but they are all very beautiful books with very beautiful ideas and a wonderful study on the monster and man, the monsters among us, loneliness, and how to live in a world that either rejects you or that you need to live outside of for your own reasons. So yeah, we're really a wonderful topic, a wonderful trope. Thank you again to Jason White for mentioning this at all because it really inspired me to do two fun videos. I had a lot of fun creating these and going through my shells and picking out some of the vampire stuff and realizing how much of it I have parted with. So there will be videos coming up soon. I am still reading a horror in the woods, so that will be a review coming up soon. I will also have a video, a very short one about 
what happened to all my books? I know I've alluded to it a couple times, the huge call, the massive loss, the damage of water and mold. Ah, quel dommage. All my books have gone. Yeah, something like that anyway. So, have you written a vampire novel? If so, let me know in the comments below. And if you're reading some cool vampire fiction, or if there is a number one reread awesome vampire book that you love that has not been mentioned here, then definitely let me know that too. So thank you very much for watching and make sure that you have an ooky spooky day.